we the members of emed and ma education have virtually assembled here to present on the topic education for all under the subject inclusive education first of all we need to understand the meaning of word all in education it stands to deliver the education for every single individual irrespective of their caste color religion and gender economic social or cultural background when this aim of all was given it was also focused and concerned with educational needs of scs sts and other marginalized group to bring this motto of education for all at the global level one world conference on education was held in zomat in thailand in year 1990 in which near about 1500 delegates from various 155 countries and more than 150 governmental and non governmental agencies like unicef unesco undp world bank and others were engaged in uplifting and promoting this program the conference clearly stated and defined the basic learning needs of every person that might be a child a youth or an adult it also defined and derived some of its principles for promoting basic education which was to universalize access and promote equity where universalizing access means education should be given to every single individual in every corner of the world it was not limited with certain areas neither with certain states or countries it was also focused with learning and broadening the learning environment means learning should be given in such an environment that it should not create a barrier or must not create an hindrance in learning it should not limit them rather it should flourish their learning at every level it also focused with strengthening partnerships like ngos various semi government sectors and government sector whosoever and howsoever they can build up and come up to initiate this program of education for all at various level soon after 1990s it was witnessed that district primary education program 1994 was created to universalize primary education in selected districts moreover then mid day meal scheme in year 1995 was also launched with reference to this world education program but 10 years later the zomatin conference on education which was held in thailand in year 2000 it was also observed by many countries that they were far behind from those aims and objectives created at uh, thailand so they met again in dakar where they tried to define a new framework for education and which was as follows they focused on to expand early childhood care and education which was meant to provide every child such a care such a curriculum such an environment which must encourage them to learn and provide them education at every level it was also aimed to provide free and compulsory primary education for everyone to promote learning and life skills for young people and adults which means it was not merely concerned with the rote methods and rote models of learning but to give them such an skill or develop them such an skill oriented programs degrees degrees and diplomas which can uh, be a mode of earning for them in life it was also focused to increase adult literacy rate by 50% which means to increase the literacy rate in every country to achieve gender parity and gender equality and this was the result where the co educational institutions were developed and so that the gender parity and gender equality can be raised, uh, can be lessened and that reduction can be lessened to improve the quality of education the dakar framework also emphasized on improving the quality of education at every level now we'll move to education for all in india's context which will be delivered to you by yashi gupta Thank you, Master Nitin, for giving me opportunity. Now I'll I'll be continuing from here. 
Now here we are talking about the education for all policies in India. First of it is National Literacy Mission, which was started in 1988 with an aim to educate 80 million adults as an age age group of 15 to 35 years. It mainly aims to make them aware of the development issues affecting the society. Now the, coming down to second scheme here, which is Integrated Child Development Services. It was launched in 1975 in India, which provides nutritional meals, preschool education, primary health care, immunization, health checkups, and referral services to children under six years of age and their mothers. Now the third scheme here mentioned is Operation Blackboard. which is a centrally sponsored program which was started in 1987 immediately after rajiv gandhi national policy for education 1986 was released it was released to supply the bare minimum crucial facilities to a all primary school in the country now the fourth scheme here is the sarva shiksha abhiyan or ssa it is an indian government scheme aimed at universalization of primary education as mandated by the 86 amendment to the constitution of india making free and compulsory education to the children of 6 to 14 years as a fundamental right now the fifth scheme here is the mid day meal scheme and the mid day meal scheme one meal is provided to all children enrolled in government schools local body schools government aided schools special teaching center centers maktabs and madrasa supported under the ssa here cooked meals are provided to every children enrolled and attending school from 6 to 14 years meals are provided to children studying in class 1 to 8 now the sixth scheme here we are discussing is the right to free and compulsory education that is rte it is an act, act of parliament of india enacted in 2009 which describes the moralities of importance of free and compulsory education for children between 6 to 14 years in india under the article 21a of the indian constitution now we'll talk about the challenges faced during the implementation of these schemes the first point is the lack of qualified teachers our schools are facing acute shortage of teachers which is a very big matter of concern and second point here is the retaining children in school to complete elementary education especially disadvantaged and marginalized group because ma- majority of the students tend to drop out due to their personal reason which should be looked over now the third point here is major dropouts at junior and secondary level the main reason behind the dropouts is the social family and personal causes of the children which should also be taken in concern and acted upon now the fourth point here is out of school adolescents and young adults now many adults adolescents and young adults are dropping out of the school which is a matter of concern it can happen due to many reasons like lack of financial support family support etc now the fifth the challenge here is the sometimes selection of subject stream is acts as an barrier sometimes the unavailability of preferred subjects of students or the student subjects of their choice which is not present in the school causes the student to choose the stream in which he is not interested which causes the uninterest in the studies or even the dropouts and now we'll discuss the strategies to overcome this challenge and first of all the first strategy is the prohibition of physical punishment and mental harassment sometimes the corporal punishment causes psychological effect on students which can also cause the child to have school phobia and school avoidance second strategy here is to ensure that child is not discriminated on the basis of caste color gender place of origin etc experiencing discrimination can be cause of adverse effect on child's mental health and can provoke stress in children now the third point is protection and monitoring of children's right to free and compulsory education now as stated in rte act in constitution it is necessary or this step is a major mandatory step to monitor the condition that where 
this this law is actually whether this law is actually implemented or not or the people are really benefited by it or not now the fourth point here is the 25th percent reservation of seats in private unaided schools under right to education act 25 25% 25 reservation is given to children from poor and socially disadvantaged home so that everyone gets their fair chance of regardless of their status now sorry now we'll analyze the progress report the first one is the significant reduction in gender disparity is been witnessed but still needs improvement as you know that there has been substantial progress towards gender equity in basic education but there are still large gaps remain at secondary levels it can be caused of due to sex stereotyping and lack of knowledge and awareness now the second point here is the introduction of coeducational education has brought the ratio of boys to girls to 1 is to 0.87 now the constant effort with the help of constant effort of government it is helping to achieve the target of equal ratio of boys to girls gradually now third point here is the primary completion rate resulting to 70% when 97% were enrolled here as here we can see that the students are enrolling in school actively but in between they are dropping out due to some reason which needs to be figured out fourth point is the literacy 81% uh, it is on the track the adoption of laws like rte and several other attractive schemes has helped in an upsurgement of literacy rate now the last point here is integration of technology with knowledge resulting in universalization of education with the help of technology the education is within reach of many people who are not able to attend school or colleges and it is also made teaching learning process very effective the best example of this is the online class in, on which we are interacting now without technology it would have been impossible to continue our studies in the current scenario now coming down to the conclusion after all this we have concluded that we are progressive towards a goal and with a constant effort we will soon achieve our goal of education for all in real sense just a just a matter of time and all this effort this will achieved in no time so i will at the end, ending my presentation thank you for everyone for giving me this opportunity thank you